So this is a tutorial for the Game of Life 6D application. And with this application you can simulate 3D, 4D, 5D or even 6D simulations of the Game of Life. And what you can see here is the default settings which is a four dimensional simulation of the Game of Life. And I have built systems so that we can actually see the complete information of the simulation even though this is a four-dimensional simulation. And it's using very simple rules with only cells with two neighbors getting born. I can easily add another rule here and now cells with two or four neighbors are getting born. And the simulation immediately starts using those rules and we can see that the different patterns are emerging from the simulation. If I press restart we are going to see that initially there is only this square shape in the middle of the simulation. And on the next screen I can actually change this shape. And now this is the square there was before. And for example if I change the starting pattern to be this, we can see that at the start of the simulation this is the same pattern I just built with those settings. And now we can already understand that since we can change the birth rule settings and we can change the starting pattern we are going to have practically countless different starting conditions for the simulation. But this is only scratching the surface because this is now a four dimensional simulation of the game of life but on the next screen I can actually select it to be a five dimensional simulation of the game of life. And if I go back we are going to see that it starts completely the same but already the second pattern is different from the one it was when the simulation was four dimensional simulation. So now there's another parameter we can use to change the starting conditions of the simulation. Also we can change the simulation size. So the resolution setting means that if I'm using full resolution there's going to be a cell for each pixel on my screen. Usually this is quite much so I'm using let's say one fourth of the resolution of the screen. So this means, for example, with these settings, there's going to be 3 million different cells in the simulation. The next setting is dimension 3 size, which is simply, if this was a 3-dimensional simulation of the game of life, the Y size would be 6 with these settings, and 5 with these settings, and so on. And then there's the size settings for dimension 4, 5, and 6, and these are only enabled if I'm using that size simulation. For example, now with 4D simulation I can only change up to 4 dimension size. And finally there's this draw dimensions option which is very useful. So for example now this is a 4 dimensional game of life simulation and I can select how much of the information is actually being drawn on the screen. If I put this to 2 and go back to the simulation we are only going to see half of the information in the simulation and the patterns are going to be different than if we were drawing the complete information. Now exam for example in the dark parts of the simulation there actually could be cells but we are not drawing them. But if I pause this simulation and use these rotation buttons we can see the hidden information in the other, other uh, simulational planes of the simulation. For example now this is completely dark here but if I rotate it now this arrow shape appears there. So actually there was something going on in here, but it wasn't rendered at the time. But if I go all the way back and choose to render the complete information, now when the simulation goes to the same part it was before, we are also going to see the arrow shape there, because all the information is going to be rendered on the screen. I think we are approaching that part. There's at least was an arrow shape and there, yeah. Now the shapes seem a little bit different so it's hard to even tell where it was. But I think it was the red arrow shape we saw before. And now we can see also that there's less dark in the simulation because we are rendering all the information in the simulation. This is very useful for example if we are having very many uh, simulation planes in the simulation. For example, if we now render all 12, there's going to be quite a lot of information to be rendered on one part of the screen, so it can get a little bit crowded in the simulation. But I have also built options to ease this problem, because now, for example, we have this nice looking shape here, and we can little bit see that 
maybe there is more information that meets the eye here. But if I use this button here, we can separate that information a little bit and actually see what was hidden behind the scenes. And also, when I press the, press the button again, there's going to be different options for how the simulation is rendered. So this is all very useful for testing and finding new nice patterns in the simulation. Let's go back to a four-dimensional simulation. And then I'm going to simply show the last page, which is saved files. For example, if I wanted to save the simulation settings I currently have, I would only press save and then name this file something. And then when I press OK, it's going to be saved. But now there's already some predefined saves in the app. And now, for example, if I press load here, we are going to see a base 5 simulation, which is 5-dimensional. And all these settings are automatically changed to the saved file. And now we can see that I have built this simulation settings here, which we can test easily. And also load again later if we want to. So that's all the basic settings in the simulation. I hope you enjoy this. And this is available for iOS, Android and Windows. So you should be able to get it for your own testing. I will put the download links into the description. So this is all for now and bye.